Yeah. We are going to be live. We are live. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this is Yogini Priyanka from Ontario, Canada, and the show is Divine Dialogue. And for this show today, we have our guest, Ailet, who is a lawyer and a Bollywood producer. And we are coming to know each other. And then I I like the vibes which Ailet has. Like she posted a video on Insta and we are doing a program together. So until that video, I didn't know what Eyelet is about. So after seeing that video, and now since I know she's Hollywood producer, I have like, oh, she's, that's why the video came out like this. So let's us all welcome our dear guest Eyelet to the show, Divine Dialogue. Eyelet, you're so welcome here. Thank you so much. I feel so welcome and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, beautiful. So, uh, I have your bio and I have posted that bio on Facebook page where, you know, this uh, event is happening. So I would, we would, since we have you here in front of us, um, you let us know about yourself, how your life is, where your life is now, and then what you do, and we'll go one by one. So what you want to tell us? tell our viewers and like, you know, I am so excited to know more about you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Um, well, gosh, where do I begin? I, I think my bio pretty much sums it up. So I, uh, my background is in law. Um, and then about three and a half years ago, I decided to pivot and I moved into uh, film. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a producer. Um, and as a trial lawyer, you have, no idea what that means. And, um, and I have no idea what it means, but I had a very strong conviction that that's what I wanted to do. So I just called everyone that I knew from, that had anything to do with art uh, whatsoever. Um, and, I, and I told them, uh, so I'm a producer now, but could you explain to me what that is? <laughs> and, uh, and that's, it's, and I, you know, quickly or slowly, um, I found my way to working on the projects that I'm currently working on and uh, really enjoying uh, my new my new path. Okay, so let me ask you, thank you for that. Let me ask you another question that like, you know, you are a professional lawyer and then, you know, Florida and another city, which I missed. I read this in, in the morning. So, so you are a lawyer and then that, you know, what made you switch to a producer full time? And then because I read your uh, story about your grandmother. So why don't you let us, uh, you know, know something about that childhood and then sure. what, you know, so you're a producer now, but there is a history behind it. The backstory. So, the backstory. Um, okay. So when I was little, so my grandmother uh, immigrated with her family to Israel and really was one of the founders of Israeli television. So she was one of the very first people to kind of come into it. There was just one channel at, at the time. And um, by the time I came around, she had worked her way up. She was also a producer mm -hmm. and uh, she had an office in the studios there. And mm -hmm. I used to come to the office with her, particularly during the summer because my mom worked. And I was fascinated by everything, everything. I was as fascinated by going down to the television studios uh, as I was by their photocopy machine. I mean, I really was so into it. Um, you know, and, and, but at the time, my grandmother felt uh, something that I'm sure many women and, and myself included still feel these days, which is it's a tough industry. It can be tougher for women. And, yeah. um, and back then that was much more true than it is now even. So, so she was pretty discouraging when it came to me joining the industry. And in fact, um, what mm -hmm. my parents and grandparents envisioned for me was uh, uh, something that involved higher education, something that, you know, you sit in an air, in an air conditioned office, which by the way, I still do, but uh, it was, you know, they, they said really, you can do. Um, Sorry about that. They, Sorry they about that. that. Yeah. Um, they said, you can do whatever you want. Um, so long as it's a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> and uh, my brother was already in medical school at the time. So yeah. I decided to go for law. And that's really how I arrived at that. And I will say, 
I wouldn't take it back. It wasn't right for me in, in many respects. First of all, I have terrible ADHD and it involves a lot of reading and a lot of, in, in keeping a lot of pieces of information in your mind at the same time. I'm also mm-hmm. much more of a big picture person and mm-hmm. it involves a lot of detail. So in a way it trained my mind on some things that I wasn't naturally good at. So mm-hmm. the reason I wouldn't take it back, even though it was quite unpleasant, uh, was is that I do think it made me overall better equipped to be a producer because I can not turn on detail mode now, which really didn't exist beforehand. Um, and I also think law school teaches you to be very autodidactic. You do your own research and you mm-hmm. learn it yourself. And I think that that is something that has really come in handy in any new pursuit, but in this pursuit in particular. So, um, so yeah, so I hope that answers your question. That, that's answered the question pretty much that why you were, you know, and it's like in Asian countries, we have heard you can become doctor, lawyer, or engineer, but not media, you know, uh-huh. you know, the Bollywood kind of thing or TV, like it's not for girls or even for boys, like they, you know, right. It's like, you know, if it's um, something, you know, with those three or four profession, then it's good for them, for the kids, not otherwise. So yeah. it's a sense of security, right? They, they, our parents want us to have security that maybe they felt that they didn't have, right? So, Absolutely. Um, but things have changed and this, the amount and type of security we get as an attorney is not, is not what it used to be. That's first of all. Also, it just doesn't make, it's very individual, you know, we're individuals and every person has their own set of things that inspire them, that make them feel good, that make them happy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's amazing that, you know, pursuing the career you want to pursue and being a contribution to yourself, your family and your community. And the whole world is our community. So thanks for doing that. So what's your upcoming projects? Okay, so I have, so first of all, I don't take on too many projects at one time. Kind of uh-huh. the standard is for producers to have what, what you call a slate. And yeah. uh, a slate could have 20, 40 projects in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I generally don't do that because I like to focus my energy on my full energy on one or one two project. projects at a time. And then I usually have a few more projects that I know are in the pipeline, meaning once I'm done with these, I'll transfer over to these. So we're talking about no more than four projects, basically. Amazing. So, and yeah. Yeah, I was reading about your the existing projects and the awards, and it's such an accomplishment. And how's your experience? Do you think that the qualification matter more or motor matter more or experience counts more than? Oh, it's such a good <laughs> um, It's such a good question. So first of all, I will say that in the last three years, I've learned, I learned every single day. And I'm very fortunate to work with individuals that know more than I do, which in fairness is not tough to find, but I seriously have been very fortunate. And that's true both with law and it has been true with film. So I think that, um, and, and, and so I, I do think experience matters a great deal, but again, I think that my education has been invaluable in it. I, I, I think it's just kind of tough to, to just pick one. I, I will say that I think education comes in many forms. I don't think that every person that wants to be a producer needs to go to law school. That's ridiculous, right? But, um, but the education, I, I mean, I still, my experience is education as well, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And your formal education helps you in like in greater extent, but then experience is your education. That's, you you know, you stated it so beautifully well. And what's been your struggles in the industry or otherwise? And if you can pour some light that how you could overcome those struggles so that the new upcoming producers or women entrepreneurs can learn something from it. Mm, So, First of all, I will say that in a way, struggles, and I, maybe, I, maybe, maybe calling them struggles is not exactly how I would call them. I, maybe I would call them challenges 
and the cha- and and I am challenged by this job daily, literally, mm-hmm. literally daily. And I think that I would lose interest in it if I wasn't. I I grow so much every day. Yeah. I feel like in terms of I learn mm-hmm. something. I learn at least one new thing every day. And some of these yeah. things, I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I'd known them a second ago, right? But it that's how you learn. So. Um, I think that at the very beginning, it was just a question of what to do. Like, I wanted to be a producer when I, and uh-huh. I'll address film specifically because that's what I do now. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to be a producer, but I literally didn't know what a producer does. And I had a wow. call in, with in a, an acquaintance, you know, like this a type of acquaintance that you, he's not like really a friend, you don't talk very often, but you've always liked the guy. He's always liked me, you know, just so he picked up the phone and he happens to work at Netflix, not in, um, uh, not on the content side, but I think in the marketing side. Yeah. And I told him the same thing I told everyone. I said, listen, I'm a producer now, but like, what do I do? Yeah. And he said to me, uh, well, you know, if you want to be a producer, you probably should make a movie. And it sounds so simple. <laughs> <laughs> kind of blew my mind I was like oh, you're right and uh, I was uh-huh. pregnant at the time and we wound up uh-huh. um and we wound up making a movie I was super pregnant uh and it was shot <laughs> in Tennessee in 107 degree weather wow uh, but that's the movie that's the first short that I was involved in and it made and it gave me a ton of experience because just being there there is no replacement for that so, um, and then we managed to, to get a distribution deal uh, for that short. And, um, mm-hmm. and that's the one that won, uh, at this point, it's won about, about or maybe more than 50 different awards. Wow, such an incredible story uh, that I want to become producer, but I don't know. And I am resourceful. I can reach people and then I can listen. You know, you listen to them and then, you took actions. Right? Yeah, and, and in fairness too, and I will say like, this is an advice that I have because you mm-hmm. asked about that too. Yes. And this occurs to me is that not every advice I got, I liked and not every advice I got, <laughs> I took. A lot of the advice that I was getting about getting into Hollywood, they said, go become a PA. I was like, I've worked as an attorney for, I get wow. to bed at nine. Like I can't, wow. you know, I have, a, I have a toddler. I can't, you know, I it wasn't an option for me. And a lot of people said, well, then, you know, just don't lose your day job, like stick to law and maybe become an entertainment lawyer. And that's not exactly what I wanted to be. I wanted to produce movies. <laughs> I so wanted to clap now. Oh, thank you. Well, my, my advice to anyone is that you want to do the things that you want when you, when you get advice, know that that's what it is. Nobody can tell you what to do. And you're gonna find the right, you, you may have more answers in you than you realized, and then you realize, but sometimes it just takes someone else explaining it to you for it to just resonate with you. And all of a sudden you realize, yes, that's exactly what I need to do. And that's the moment I had with that friend of mine at Netflix. And, the, and, and that's a moment I certainly didn't have with all the people that said, go be a PA. And, you know, because I was a PA as a production assistant, just someone that, you know, basically run, run errands around the set. And not to say that it's a, it's a, every set needs them. It's an incredible and valuable and a hard job to have. Yeah. And, and I'm too old to do it. I'm too old and frail to do it. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Yeah. That's, you know, the, what um, I am listening is like, you know, you can create your own uh, path. You know, out of like, there are so many parts that's good for them. And they have decided that. And that's the truth also, because, you know, I am Bollywood fan. So I listen to their interviews, the show I am doing, like, you know, kind of that, uh, that coffee show kind of a thing, but this is yoga show and divine dialogue. So, but then I have heard many people that uh, the, those who are stars, they, they were assistants before, assistant before, like, you know, at the age of 14, 15, 17 or 30 or whatever, Whenever they were starting, they were assistant before. But then coming out of something like, you know, I have toddlers, I have these, 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 these things. And like, now tell me what. So I have desire to become this, but now I can create my path and still mm-hmm. be successful because I take struggles as challenges and I, I am resourceful. 
So this is what I'm hearing. It's like so inspiring. Okay, so what is your success mantra? My success mantra? Oh man, I don't know that I have one. That's really tough. <laughs> yeah. It, especially in an artistic field, I really, you know, there is, there are considerations that are uh -huh. uh, financial and economic and stuff like that, but you, but so much of it is going with your gut and, and really trusting, well, do I trust that this filmmaker can make a film that I'll be proud to tell my kids I yeah. partook in, right? Um, so, yeah. Listen to your guts. Maybe it's listen the, to your guts. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. success mantra because I'm seeing like people are telling you that we do this. This is a fashion, you know, in this manner, this, uh, this industry runs, but like here, I let us like, I can create my path and, you know, create something. And that's amazing and inspiring that you listen to your gut because that, that element is like some higher power is making you do this. So this is how I see it. Like, you know, we all are divine and then good listening to your guts. It's something higher you're listening to higher power and then you can create anytime new things as well perfect so i have a couple of questions written down but i am a spontaneous person so i wasn't looking at the questions at all <laughs> so let me look at the, the questions um, so what you do for fun and then what's what you like outside your work yeah um so for fun so i have a two-year-old and he's <laughs> he's quite fun and also very exhausting um, mm -hmm. and, uh, but for fun, I like to run. I like to do yoga. Mm -hmm. Um, I follow a plant-based diet. Um, so that ends up being that you, you chop a lot of vegetables. So if that's a hobby, that's yes, one, of my, that's a hobby. <laughs> one of my hobbies. And, um, Absolutely. yeah, I used to, I used to paint, but I haven't for, for a little while. I have a ton of hobbies. Um, and mm -hmm. Really, it ends up being that I um, I end up kind of kind of circulating. Does that make sense? Like, so for a year, I'll pick three and focus on them. Yeah. So, yeah, and, yeah. Then for, uh, and then the next year, maybe something else. I, it's like a, I I read uh, in a book once that it's it's like an ice cream shop, right? You can you can go into an ice cream shop and get maybe three flavors, but if you got six, you get probably pretty sick. So so yeah. long as but you can come back in and then pick a different flavor. So that's Absolutely. kind of how I do it. Yeah. That makes sense to me. And what made you um like were you uh plant-based always or like no, so I I went plant-based. First of all, it it's been it was not consistently, meaning I've kind of fallen off the horse and got back on, you know, mm -hmm. several times because it you know, sometimes you go through periods in, of life where it's tougher to incorporate into your life. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fairly restrictive diet, but basically it's no animal products, no oil, and um, no no processed foods. And um, and I, I came to it not from an animal rights perspective, which is not to say I don't care about animal rights. Yeah. I do, but that's I... not what got me there. But it was that I... Um, I got, I had some pretty high cholesterol, which runs in my family. And, uh -huh. um, and I wanted to take care of that as opposed to taking care of it the traditional way, which is to go on a stand drug. And then you can't, you can't really stop taking it after that. Uh -huh. So, so that was what created the change initially. And then, you know, you do end up liking the fact that it's, uh, it's easier for, it's easier on the environment, on your carbon footprint. It's nicer yes. to animals, which I love. I have my, my dog is napping mm -hmm. here and, yeah. uh, you know, and um, so, yeah, so that's kind of how I got to it. And I, I love reading. So I mm -hmm. read basically every book there is to read about it. So if anyone's interested in it, there's a book called The China Study, which gives you the, <laughs> the history of it and uh then there's a book an amazing book called how not to die and how and then it's companion book how not to diet um which is quite clever and um yeah it's something i feel very passionate about amazing so uh, you know we'll 
our viewers are getting you know something valuable as your experience and the list of books you have listed any other advice you would like to give to people you know in any form like you know whether being um, on plant based diet pursuing their dreams or having fun or any other piece of advice and then where they can find you okay yeah sure so um so i'll tell you uh i'll tell you this i'll give you something really practical because i'm all about practicality so um i will say that one one thing that i did with, that i found super 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 life changing and very enlightening as well was um on Coursera, um, there's a Yale course that's offered. It's called The Science of Wellbeing. It's taught by Dr. Lori Santos. And it's you can audit the class for free, or you can get like a certificate if you pay, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an incredible um, distillation of mm -hmm. positive psychology and mm -hmm. actual changes you can make in your schedule. It only works if you actually make the changes, but, um, but to me, it, it made such a difference in my life. And I think that, um, and I think that there isn't a person out there, especially if you're inner, if you struggle with your inner experience, meaning if you have a fairly low happiness threshold or a fairly high anxiety threshold or both, um, mm -hmm. there's no doubt in my mind that this is something you should do. So, um, so that's the, so that's really, you know, and the more I can talk about Wonder. that, yeah you know, so nothing. maybe you know whenever you're available next we'll talk about more, you know more about it and some practical tips for our viewers um which is like it's a gift for me too so i'll as soon as i'll finish this after my yoga i will search for it and then we are yeah. in that so, yeah. I'll, so good. I'll you know ask more about that and you know being organized and uh, implementation is important you can read about like there's so much information everywhere on Google, YouTube, Facebook, but what if you don't implement it? Then absolutely, okay. it does nothing. It there's does nothing. nothing. It makes you feel like you're kind of failing at it. <laughs> so Ab you, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So don't put a tag like you know you you're a failure. Just do one step. You know maybe like you're picking up fun things like not six seven. You can have so many fun things, but you're picking two, three, so that you can actually enjoy that. Yeah. Rather than getting overwhelmed with the fun thing also and eventually not doing it. Yeah, that's beautiful. And where our viewers can find you? You are a okay, beautiful so soul. Actually, yeah. So I'll mm -hmm. I'll give you uh, I'll give you my answer to that. So so recently I started a project called the To Be Honest Project, and um, that's on to be honest dot uh, to be honest project dot org um and that's the website there's also a facebook page and an instagram account and um you can see a video of me kind of doing the project the idea behind the project is that for three days you basically do a cleanse from automatically saying like i'm good i'm okay i'm fine if you're asked how you're doing and instead you check in with yourself and you say the truth um and that's because I have this conviction that vulnerability is so important for to create a connection with one another. And I think that if enough people do it, then it can create really a more um, kind and loving society and a kinder and loving world, ultimately. Um, I think one of my favorite quotes is, the wound is where the light comes in. And I think that um, this project was very inspired by that understanding and based on my personal experience. This is something I did um, and then my friends did and then they came back to me and they said, listen, this has to be a thing, you have to do it. So the best way to get in touch with me is through those websites and also, um, and also uh, yeah, I urge and I literally challenge you and all your listeners to take part in this project and do it with me. And you can see the exact directions on the website, on our Facebook page, and on our Instagram account. Yeah. So I accept the challenge and I, you know, I ask my viewers to take the challenge. So uh, now for three days, I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm doing this work with my coaches, but uh, I will make a video and then tell you like, so how I'm going, I'm telling you every day, making a day, video every day or like after three days? 
So what I have, I didn't want, even though this is a big ask, right? It's not like the ice bucket challenge where you just pour in a, a bucket of ice on yourself and then you go change, right? This <laughs> yeah. has impacts three days of your life. So yeah. I didn't want to overburden people. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason, so instead what I did was, so uh, is to ask people to share after the three days um, and basically answer five questions that are on the website, that are on the Facebook page, on the Instagram. And the questions, those questions, and you can see me do it. Um, I, you know, I figured I can't just ask people to do it. I went first and I answered these questions about how it actually went. And, um, and the idea is that it helps you also kind of figure out what, is this going to change anything in the way I am and the way I'm going to interact with people in the world? Yeah. And what has this taught me about myself? It's a, so far, no person that has taken it has come out of it saying, I'm sorry, I did it. This was, a, or I learned nothing. You know, everyone takes something away. It impacts you and it impacts the people you're having conversations with. I think so. it's like authentic interaction rather than just saying for the sake of, oh, I got that. Mm -hmm. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Cool. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm very excited you. to have you. I'm so excited to hear your feedback on it. I will tell you, uh, you know, share my feedback with you. And thank you, Ayla. Thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedule and so pouring much. some light here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Perfect. So, and all right.